Well, that's disappointing. I was hoping that they'd be smoking this morning so you could see, but apparently 47,000 bushels of grain yesterday wasn't enough to keep them running all night. I cannot believe it. They're eating grain so fast. I think each one is up to almost 2,000 bushel an hour because the corn's so dry, down to 18 to 20 percent. So they are eating corn. This harvest ain't gonna take long at this rate. This is record-breaking. Record-breaking bushels a day and bushels an hour dried. It's very exciting to me, very exciting. Hey guys, welcome to Larson Farms, by the way. Oh, we'll see who's all can show up and open their eyes this morning. It's uh, leaving the yard at 7 with shop truck to get fueled up and trucks in field at 8, ready to go. I'm tired. Get her done. Are you tired? Getting there. You? Why? Yeah, I'm terribly tired. Midnight. I'm up at 5.30 sucks. Why are we up so early? Can I still beat you here? It's hard to look this good every day. I know. I know. Trust me, I battle with that too. My eyes are getting here. I'm gonna need a new nap. So the results are in. Yeah. The results are in. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about it, now. It's overall. Really? See, yeah. I had a lot of people message me saying suspenders. Well, I think the comments on YouTube are definitely overalls. Overalls? Yeah. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> we have a guy that's working for us that we're in all overalls. I'll have to ask Steve where he buys them. I think I could get camel overalls. <laughs> I bet they you, make You those. wouldn't see me I think there. my mom has some. Why? Style. It'd be like a, who's in the grain cart? You couldn't see me out there. Oh my. Get your stuff in the truck. We gotta go. Aren't we waiting for Doug? Randy? Anyone? Everybody. You think they'll be out here at 7? I don't think so. They all looked pretty tired at midnight last it's night. Seven. 7, they got 3 minutes to be here and in that truck and I'm leaving. Make me get up and then they don't show up. That's pretty rude. It's so aggressive. Me? I'm aggressive in the morning? That is way too bright for me to look at in the morning. My shirt? What? My mask? You gonna back in them, uh, no, the I gotta get going. Uh, you gonna take any of my tools? All of your them? tools are coming with me. Now, last night there was a little issue with the quad track. We have a leak, antifreeze leak, and we're going to be trying to eliminate that leak. Here we go. It's never good when you see a tractor sitting out in the middle of the field with the hood up. Never good at all. So we'll be fixing here. Oh, by the way, that thing is a mean machine. Salford, 52 Enforcer. i take you guys over and show you the beautiness, the beautiness, the beautiness of the tillage. Nice and black. After last fall's debacle of the tillage where the soybeans were all combined at 18 percent had to dry them all we said no more and that their machine the sulfurd she eats it up buries it the chisel plow days are gone for us hopefully okay here we go yeah i get three inches to work in there with that leak and then we got an exhaust problem the flex pipe busted off and was blowing all the heat an exhaust up towards windshield. Not good. $800. They want for a new exhaust pipe. I say a new exhaust pipe. New exhaust pipe. We went to the local store, bought some new exhaust piping, four inch in size, welded it on. I'm gonna put it back on, make sure that we cut it in the proper spot, get the right length there, and we're gonna put that back together. I don't know what they charge us for that, 30 bucks? But it wasn't 800. Stay tuned. We're gonna start burning fuel like we are. I need me a fuel trailer, I think. I'd look pretty sweet behind here. Big black one. Yeah, so I can only hold 175 and 245 on this truck. This thing holds 350 or 330. Other combine holds probably close to that. Need more storage. That's 
not even talking about the quad track that holds 500, but he can make it a couple days. I need a, I need a refill. <laughs> no fun. Here's the tee that I cut out. I'm going to take that home, spot weld that little orifice or tee or outlet, whatever you want to call it. I'm spot welding that shut and putting it back in, coupling the lines back together because I don't need that line there. And we are going to get this done. i got to take this home, cut that off to the right length, weld that inside of there. Sorry, this is all new to me. Not really. Yeah. Weld that into there at the proper length. Put that on tractor. We're good to go. Oh, that was that was painstaking knuckle grinder. Did I mention to you what an animal that thing is? And we're back to picking corn. We're going at about 7:50. It is now 8:15, and we've sent three trucks out the door. The carts were pretty much full last night so we were ready for the trucks right away in the morning and the whole crew showed up right here trucks were here at about 750 I would say got them loaded up and start the circus all over again Carts flying all over here. Gonna have three semi loads here waiting. There's one semi. We're done with this field and heading to the next one. Carts are gonna be waiting a little bit for trucks. It's three quarter mile long rounds really buried the trucks. Okay, we're gonna put the pipe on. So here we are to the next field where dad planted seven acres of corn. And then we had to abort mission on that because he almost got stuck and it was too wet. Now it, most of it's PP'd. That is also out there around that area is where we air flowed soybeans on, which are still not combined because they were still grass green when we put the corn heads on. So they've now froze, so they're all brown and probably could be combined shortly, but we're into corn, so they're gonna be what they're gonna be. Have to wait till after corn harvest. That is what's going on with them, but I am interested to see what they look like and yield whenever we get to them. Take some measurements of the new one. New one. Old one. Welded it all up. Guess what? Pipes are different, so it don't work. Spent all that time. Throw it in the junk. Pay 800. Paying 800. Well, I gotta fill up my uh, fridge here with Northern Chill Water. Check that out on Amazon. It's pretty good. Really good for you. Fill my fridge up here. With something healthier than Mellow Yellow, I suppose, which I'm quite disappointed it's empty of. Need to refill it with Mellow also because I'll never quit drinking Mellow Yellow. Even though the wife is trying to make me. You're not gonna win, woman. It's so nice having a fridge. I'll uh, put the link to this water in the description below. Go check it out on Amazon. It's American's Water. America. Nobody is seeing this, are they? Oops. The bonus row. Instead of the row of the shame, I call it the bonus row. It's for whatever reason, there's one extra row in the field, right? <laughs> bring it in, Brian, bring it in. Yeah, get that thing going. Any 
speeds there. Six miles an hour right now. Unloading on the go. 4,200 bushel an hour through this machine. Just in the yellow a little bit on horsepower. Some might ask, what are you doing with the vacuum cleaner? Vacuum it. Hang on, guys. Maybe I'll get there. Holy cow. That was a long way up here. This just ain't worth it. I can't do this. We're gonna go inside the dryer. So, for those of you that have never been inside a dryer before, that's what it looks like. And there is the burner, 24 foot of pure hot stuff. And we gotta vacuum that out. If you cannot have corn in on there, so all that's got to go. You get the idea, right? And the corn this year is so big, kernels don't want to go through the end of the vacuum. Vacuuming, got to do this a couple, three times until it finally all rattles down. I'll shut that off so that you have a more pleasant tour of the inside of this here. So once again, inside of the corn dryer, 40 some feet tall, 24 feet long. I'm really struggling here, Nikki. This is hard. I don't know what else to talk about. It's all common sense to me. Well, of course the wind would blow the door shut. Help! Help! Oh, japers. No, I'm not trapped. I can get out. Never fails. Yesterday, I'm sure you've seen the green bin door. That got left open, yep. Chet went in there and Big Swede, they were doing some service work to the bin sweep. Greased it and come out. Well, then the wind blew that door shut too. So that I didn't know they didn't close up the doors until it was too late. It's too late. We're safe. Okay, I've reached the other end. I wish I could have done a better job of giving you a tour. Maybe. Oh yeah, we're out. There, we're free. We're free. Oh yeah, there's some more corn down there, but I'll have to just keep an eye on this one. I gotta get this thing fired up, or I'm gonna get fired. Continuous flow dryer is what this is. So it's cooling on the bottom two tiers. Uh, the upper ones above that are all heat. Screenless dryer is what this is called. And the idea of screenless is to get away from all that trouble that a guy has with the outside of the dryer plugging up. Been there, done that, hated it. So here, you actually can reach right in and see the corn. And on the outside, you can also see it. So the idea here is to heat up the chamber in here, 220 degrees is what we run at, or less, depending on. So we got a 24 foot burner, 24 feet of LP flames shooting out of there. Heating this up, the heat then goes in this area throughout the whole dryer, and then it goes out the whole outside the wall right there, opposite side. When the heat comes off the burner, goes in the hole here, goes down through the corn, and out the outside hole, it is taking along all of the moisture. 40 some feet tall. So that is how come you dry corn, or why we have to dry corn, I guess I should say, is it's got to be 14 and a half to 15 percent for the elevator to buy it from us. And we're taking it out of the field right now from 17 and a half to 20, 21 percent, so it's really coming out quite nice. Last year it was 26, 28 percent moisture. The dryer's got to work out. I wish I had more time, but I got to get vacuuming. that bend door here, the outside bend door blew shut, broke the spring off that's supposed to be there, holding it open. Well, when that blew closed, I didn't know. I just didn't know, but I did find out. By the way, those of you that didn't know if that would work, they do work. I'm gonna start this bad boy up. Both grain legs are on. Yes. It's gonna be boring. Oh, I'm full of 
trucks are getting backed up. Definitely need another semi. So I've been doing some adjustments to the combine because it's kind of grinding the corn up. Different hybrids, you gotta change the rotor spacing quite a bit faster, slower, tighter, vice versa. So I'm just checking to see how it's doing, make sure there's no corn on the cob yet, obviously, would be a bad thing. These are kind of rubbery, so they don't want to break. So you can run it, you gotta run it faster, generally, and tighter. Really rubbery, actually. But, also looking for just grain loss on the ground, which I mean there's nothing on the ground. Look at that. No corn, which, oh, there's one. Could be header loss, so that, I mean, that's as good as you're gonna ever get it. And that's pretty good for about 200 bushel corn at six miles an hour. It's absolutely unreal that that machine can keep it in there and clean it as good as it is. Blows my mind. That combine's a game changer. Don't be scared of the new combines. She's getting so dirty. My stock stomper spring is rusted. She's busted and gone. There's supposed to be a spring there to hold it down. These, see all these stocks are all bent over and broke. It helps with, for one, not damaging the track, because as you can see, this row right here, which seems to be bent, or what's going on here? Something's not right. Something is not right. She's crooked. It's not even running on the row. She's damaged. Gonna have to look into that. Like I was saying, it's supposed to keep it from wearing the tracks out, the tires out, like this. So you get that, just eats them up. So that's why we run stock stompers. I'm really not a fan of these ones though, or the other ones. I, there's gotta be something better. I don't like these at all, because when you raise the head, they hook on stuff, get bent like that, especially in the mud, which is what we've been farming in for the last few years. Hasn't been good. Hasn't been good at all, for conditions wise. Stock stompers also help with the decomposing process. Helps to break that stock apart. Sorry, I gotta talk to you while I'm filming. Setting up the next shot. That's oh, locked up. Come on, really? Going to get a load of fertilizer. Getting old is not good. There's the biggest load yet, 135,800 pounds. The big Swede's gonna have to drag that back to the loading site. Look at that load. I love this cart. Look at that load. Woo hoo hoo hoo! 135,000 pounds, unreal. Add to the truck. So we've done 170 acres today. It is 5.30 and we're heading to our farthest away field that actually Dan and Randy own. It's over by Ortonville. So we're road tripping. It's about, I would say 24, 25 miles away from the farm. So the trucks are really gonna get bogged down now. It's gonna be really slow going. But the field isn't square by any means so it ain't a fast combining farm. That's gonna help out with the trucking. Look at me, I'm healthy. I'm eating carrots, which I don't like. They taste like dirt. For some reason, they taste like dirt. And I'm drinking water, which is actually really good. I, I am enjoying that. It's cold because of my fridge. So I went to the dentist and did a filling, and I think it's got a high spot on it because every day that goes by, my tooth hurts worse and worse and worse. And can't even chew on the left side anymore. Look at that beautiful view. Wow. Lakefront property, isn't that something else? Oh, come on, Randy, hurry it up, hurry it up. Traffic jam, severe traffic jam. Oh my. So now I have to wait for him to come by here, then it exposes more rows for me to go that way into. And he's only going four miles an hour, so I outrun him very quickly. Fell down. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, 
Sorry about that. Jay, grain cart operators trying to unload on these curbs makes me nervous. 